In this first slide, you can see the routing of the vent line hoses all the way from the intake manifold all the way to the catch can in the very back of the engine compartment. I really didn't like this setup and I tried several times to make it work, but I really didn't like it. In this slide, you can see why I didn't like the area where the catch can was placed. It's very close to a wiring loom, uh, just about an inch or so away from a whole bunch of other parts of the engine. So I figured there must be a better place to put this thing and to have the hoses so that they don't go by the belts, which I didn't like, and have to be crushed into the back of the engine compartment. Fortunately, right there where the circle is, there's a big open spot on the inside of the fender. Now this is a 2016 Mazda 3 2. Here you can see the very top of the oil catch can mounted right behind the driver's side fog light. Uh, this is with the airbox removed. And I meant it's a 2.5 liter Mazda 3, sorry. There are two things going on here. Number one is you can see the C-shaped OEM ho uh, vent hose. But the other thing is this dark area where the upper nipple is. This nipple turns. If you're trying to put a small 3 8 inch hose on that nipple, not only is it very large, so very difficult to do, but it will also swivel, making it very difficult. It was so difficult to get the 3 8 inch hose on the OEM hose barb that I really felt that I was going to break it. So I just went ahead and cut that C-shaped hose in half and then I joined it. As you can see, you may want to pause the video to look at my notes on the page. If you pause the video on the previous slide, you can see that this is where I have half of the OEM tube and half of the 3 8 inch line joined with a hose barb. And here you can actually see it connected to the crankcase vent attached to the block of the engine. This lower tube here is the bottom of the intake manifold. This is a shot looking upwards behind the driver's side fog light up to where the catch can is installed in the inside of the fender. You can see the upper hose is connected, which I messed up, and that's actually the hose uh, that should be connected to this lower barb. I had to go and reverse that. You can see I've not installed the drain yet, but there's a lot of room here for this catch can. I thought I could be slick here and have the drain actually exit below the level of the car so I wouldn't have to take this panel off but I decided to have it a little more clean to just have uh, the drain up inside the fender. Here I have the lower line connected to the intake manifold. One of the things you may notice in relation to the original instructions is that I do have the upper line coming down instead of going up around the hard lines up across the top of the transmission. This is also with the starter removed. All I had at the time was some uh, aluminum tape. Uh, I hope you won't be too harsh on me for using aluminum tape. I expect that at some point I'll find a plastic cap that I can use to cap that off. However, it is not exposed to vacuum, uh, excessive vacuum anyway, and it should be fine to leave like this. I removed that resonator to allow me to have some more room for the vent lines underneath the airbox.